just God, it's amazing. Life is just a marathon, so pace it. Rush pain, that things hate me, damn Life ain't gotta be hard, just keep it basic. Welcome back to Fort Meade Declassified. I'm Monique McFadden from the Fort Meade Public Affairs Office. And today we have with us Meade High School Homeland Security Signature Program Representative Melissa Bagdad, Homeland Security Signature Lead Teacher, and current students Erica Perez, a junior, and Carl Capelli, a senior, and Fort Meade School Liaison Officer Meredith McCandless. Welcome. Thank you for having us. Well, I know, Melissa, the last time we were here when we did the first segment of our series on the Homeland Security Signature Program at Mead High School, you had already mentioned about why why Homeland Security, the Department of Homeland Security exists, all of those things. Just, just kind of remind our audience where, why Homeland Security, uh, Department of Homeland Security was created, and mm-hmm. then also this program and how it fits into Absolutely. Really quickly. Um, Obviously, the Department of Homeland Security was created after 9-11. And one of the things that we teach in in our classes is it's kind of where we start with all of our curriculums because we know it is the the basis for what we do, Um, whether it's our Explorations classes 1 and 2 or CNI class or our GIS. We always focus on that uh, kind of kickstart of the department, those 22 agencies coming under one umbrella. Um, in the Bush administration. So it's really important being located on post on Fort Meade right down the street from NSA that our students who, by the way, were not even alive on 9-11, right? They were not. Um, I think we talked a little bit about that last time, um, that they have that foundational uh, point where we can then just bounce off of. Yes, yeah. Now, let me, I know that you just gave a few abbreviations. Mm -hmm. I just want to know what they are so that everyone will know what you're talking about. Um, So uh, NSA, obviously National Security Agency. HLS, you'll hear us say Homeland Security. Um, Our other agencies, CNI is our counterterrorism and intelligence class, which is our proficiency class with the community college. And then GIS is Geographic Information Systems which is a two-year program that offers a certificate at the end, in addition to a uh, drone certification through That's the community awesome. college. That is so awesome. Yep. You, I, so now <laughs> I'm going to talk to my students uh-huh. here. I'm so excited that you guys have come out and want to share your experience about, because I know that you're focused, you're, the two of you are focused in two different areas of Homeland Security. So, Erica, what's your focus again? I focus more on community outreach and public speaking. Love it. Uh, I'm a student in GIS. Perfect, perfect. I'm just curious. I was just very curious about, you know, what the difference was. So now, so when you say that you are a student with the uh, community outreach and public speaking, what does that entail? How does that, um, how do you see yourself moving forward in your career? Is that something that you want to do in your career? Yes. So my current plan now after high school is to go to college and then join the military as an officer. So yes. I can keep that leadership role going. Well, I'm happy to hear that. And thank you for wanting to serve. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Something we're doing new this year through Homeland Security. Mm-hmm. We always have a college signing day yes. for our college right. seniors. Right. We are implementing uh, with Homeland Security and JROTC, we're going to have a military signing day. Yes. Where yes. any student who's going into the military, we're yes. going to celebrate them as well. So, or reserves or JROTC or ROTC in college, we're going to celebrate them as well. Please keep me posted about absolutely. that. Absolutely. Because I absolutely want to, and I know Meredith, if you would absolutely. too. So we definitely want to be a part of that. Yep. That's awesome. So <clears throat> when I talked to you last time, Melissa, about mm-hmm. the partnerships mm-hmm. and all of the organizations that you partner with mm-hmm. in this program, can you expand on that just a little bit? Oh, gosh. Bit? Well, um, you know, obviously, we uh, we focus on um, the Fort Meade community, right? Yes. Um, and there is no shortage of people who want to help us, which is we are so grateful and so thankful for, because from every aspect of emergency management to cybersecurity, right? So we have the opportunity with our business partners, uh, who are uh, they serve on our ICST, which is our uh, collaborative stakeholders team. Okay. Um, and they'll do everything from come in and guest speak to uh, help us with our mock interviews to support us with our military appreciation, our military student appreciation in April. We have one um, 
uh, contributor or one participant who pays for the whole breakfast. Oh, so, wow. I mean, it's it, the support we get from the community, from our businesses, mm -hmm. is incredible. I will tell you the one that we would love to um, expand on is our internships. Yes. Mm -hmm. That is the one that we're really going to focus on. Um because we understand that in the realm of cyber and things, there are some age limits and mm. some classified issues and some different things. But, um, you know, the more we can get our kids into those spots, even if it's for a shadow day or a week, Carl was at NASA this summer, right? Yeah. So it doesn't even matter where, if it's specifically geared towards uh, what that student wants to do, as long as we give them that experience, mm -hmm. okay. it opens up a whole new mm -hmm. um, perspective for them. And we are, we are eternally grateful for the support we get both on post and in the community. It's, it's, we, are, we have the most support in the county, without a doubt. So, Carl, tell me, why did you elect to join the Homeland Security Signature Program at Mead High? Yeah, so there's actually a funny side to it and a literal side. Okay. I will say the funny side is I recently watched, like, the Amazon show Jack Ryan <laughs> right, right oh, yeah. around eighth grade. But then the literal side to it is um, when I saw Ms. Bajdek come to MacArthur Middle to talk about Homeland Security, I saw how involved it was. I saw student input. I saw the opportunities. Um not only internships, but also opportunities to grow in leadership. Mm -hmm. And it really changed my pathway, and I did not regret it one bit. Like, from elementary school to about seventh grade, I wanted to be a doctor. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, when I saw Homeland Security come, I, I really knew that technology and cybersecurity and anything related to government was really the path I wanted to take. Yeah, so, and I know with um, Erica, you had already told me that your focus was in the communications aspect of Homeland Security. So, do you have a specific, Carl, do you have a specific uh, focus that you're, you're on with the Homeland Security program? Yeah, so I am a student in GIS. However, that is mainly to grow a skill and it is also a great opportunity, but I am leaning towards uh, computer engineering. Okay. I will say Homeland Security did help me on that path because you know, computer science and cybersecurity were really close, like second and third for me. Okay. But after, definitely after my NASA internship, I really narrowed it down to computer engineering. Oh, wow, yeah. so that's great. And um, mm -hmm. also with you, Erica, you are one of our military students, yes. correct? So uh, Meredith, it, she is the school liaison for military children here at Fort Meade. So if there's anything that um, you or your parents may need to reach out about anything that's going on for me, Meredith is your contact. So how has that been? Is this a new program that you were introduced to here at Fort Meade at the Meade High School, Homeland Security? So I grew up in Rhode Island. And yes. so we moved down here because my dad got a DOD job in Aberdeen. Yes. And then he got another job down here in Fort Meade. When I finished up middle school up in Aberdeen, so when I came down here, my dad signed me up for this for Mead High School. Okay. And he told me about the Homeland Security program, so I was scrolling through like the home the Mead website, and I found that there was a trip to England, so that really intrigued me. So I saw that trip, I was like, oh, this like really intrigues me to like get in this program, and then it also like with like my dad's line of work. Yes. It also helps me understand, like, like yes. the DOD community mm -hmm. and, like, how that impacts not only us as, like, civilians, but pretty much the entire nation in the world. Mm -hmm. I would say it does challenge us in different ways, not necessarily the most academically, but still uh, still pushes us. But I will say it challenges us with, like, thought-provoking um, lessons that we do learn. I do remember, like, one of the most uh, important things, like, it's kind of like a life lesson that I'll take on um, for the rest of my life is, like, dealing with media bias. Mm -hmm. So seeing... Um, how bias affects what actual news can be and mm -hmm. versus um, trying to incite emotion. Yay! <laughs> well said. I love it. Yeah, that's, well, and, and, and that's a real big issue, especially when you look at that crisis communication. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was going to speak to you about, Erica, just that crisis communication, being able to, um, you know, handle all of the different variables in play. So you have the media bias. You also have... Um, the truth. <laughs> you have the facts and then you also have, you know, being able to make sure that everyone that should have the information first has the information before you can communicate that. So all about those crisis communication. That's excellent. How do you manage 
the Homeland Security program and, you know, all of your extracurricular activities? Is that something that you find challenging? I'm going to ask Erica first, and then I'll come back to you, Carl. So... I don't really do as many extracurriculars. I'm on the varsity swim team at my school, so it's like I, it's like schoolwork to me is a balance. So Mm. it's like I go home from practice, I do my schoolwork, and I continue on. But with home and security, it's like the work is so easy to understand, Mm -hmm. and it's it all makes sense. It all makes sense, but it's intriguing to like if that's what you want, if that's like the line of work you would like to go into. So that also helps me like be focused with what I'm gonna do. So yeah. Carl, tell me about how you balance your extracurricular as well as the program and like you said, your other academics. Yeah, so I would say not only um, do I try to be flexible, but I would say like being IB, being Homeland Security and being involved in like student council, mm-hmm. those, oh, wonderful. yeah, Homeland Security is flexible, IB is flexible and you know, all my extracurriculars are also flexible with me. There's a great relationship between the teachers and the advisors with, um, with trust. Yes. Trust when there's an activity or if there's an activity, but there's also a test on okay. which one we end up choosing. Okay. Can you speak to the first responder event and can you speak to the lead for oh, me really quickly? So I think it's December 22nd, this December, we will be um, hosting a first responders drive. So we take... Um, the first responders from Fort Meade and the Cannon unit from Fort Meade mm-hmm. um, and like the Jessup I think as well and like all the local um, fire departments and police departments and we bring them over to the high school and starting last year we collectively brought more high schools in from the Meade cluster so I think it was Manorview Elementary School, MacArthur and Meade Middle and Pershing Hill Elementary School. Yes. We gave them boxes to fill up with non-perishable items and games and all winter necessities Mm -hmm. and then we brought them back to the high school and we sort them out into different boxes and we just give them to the first responders as a big thank you for their service oh that's and erica's spearheading that this year so we're super excited yeah she's going to do an awesome job and in the past the first responders will do demonstrations for us okay so the canines do a demonstration the police officers last year was it was rainy so we didn't but um we're super excited that uh, Erica's Hopefully spearheading that for us this year. And lead for me. Oh yeah, so um, this past semester, Homeland Security has taken part in the program Invent to Prevent, where we identify uh, whether at risk or just any community within the environment, or our environment, um, specifically the school environment. So we, in, we decided to choose military students, English language learners, and incomers. So okay. we named it Lead for Mead, where LEAD stands for Learn, Engage, and Drive Equity for MEAT. I love it. Yep. So it's spelled with an E at the end. Okay. Of MEAT. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we have a group of ambassadors, a group of student ambassadors, about 25. Yep. Um, so whenever a new student comes to school, whether it's purely a new student or a military student, they'll mm-hmm. be able to shadow them, uh, be with them throughout the throughout their day to see, uh, or to just have like a friend as well. Yeah. That's so awesome. I love that because yeah. that encompasses the Army's youth sponsorship program. Right. So that's amazing. Yeah, and also part of it um, with the English language learners, um, we've started to translate. So everything we put out, I said whether it's social media posts um, or posters that we put up, we provide Spanish translations. So what has kept you in the program for the four years that you've been in high school, Carl? Oh, man, yeah, I love this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I don't know, for, just from the start, it's been great. Um, Homeland Security 1 definitely was uh, w- was virtual for me, but then Homeland Security 2 was much more engaging because it was in person, and, you know, I've had Ms. Bashdeck all four years <laughs> of high school. And Good or bad. She's, yeah. the <laughs> She's the queen. She's the queen teacher. Yeah. She always stayed. Yes. Exactly. That's true. Yeah, and there's a lot of trust and um, expe- expectations put into us. There's just so many opportunities, such as, you know, being a GIS student. Uh, this opportunity itself was already great, being able to uh, hopefully take an exam to get the certificate at the end. Mm-hmm. Yes. Because, yeah, that is just a great opportunity to have. And your drone license. Oh, yeah, drone license. Yeah. Yes. Which helps, too, Ooh. which is great. You say expectations, and you felt, you know, that they were communicated well, so you feel like your your the teachers and all of those persons involved in the Homeland Security Program have communicated their expectations. How about you, Erica? So, for the first, I only did Homeland 1 and Homeland 2. I'm calling it Homeland 2 right now. So, mm-hmm. my freshman year, our teacher unfortunately moved 
so there was a nice it was a period where i didn't really have a teacher miss badger deck was our teacher okay so i got to learn from his badger deck and it was a very great experience so and then we got a teacher so i finished up homeland one last year i couldn't unfortunately take home a security because i had to finish required courses for the county yeah so the expectation i walked up to mr hopper and i was like what can i do to like help support this program since i can't be in it this year mm -hmm. what can i do so he gave me a list of events the meat cluster events the expos okay. the first responders drive so the garden the garden the honor garden, Our honor okay. garden. so okay. through that my expectation has been dramatically increased because if if either miss badger or mr hopper needs me i'm just like one email away okay. and i come and i help so that's <laughs> But well, now she's back in her program, okay. so she's back I'm in back the family. In, okay. Not that okay. she's ever out of the family, but now she's officially back in the family. Officially. Oh, okay. So that makes sense. And for you, Carl, when you, because you were mentioning that you did an internship yep. at NASA, are there any full-time opportunities after those intern those type of internships? Do you know? Yeah, so I can, yeah, I can definitely speak of NASA. So the one that I took part in was mainly strictly um, summer 2023 yes uh, but I was given the opportunity to network with other mentors that do provide full-time opportunities after college so basically they would fund for your college and they would also um, uh, like you'd work for them in the summer and then once you're done you'd end up being full-time NASA employee oh wow mm -hmm. that's great that's a great opportunity yeah 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 my internship it wasn't really a long aligned with my interests. It was um, yeah. it was business. It was Excel, working with Excel and financial reports. Mm -hmm. But like I learned so much. It was an eye opener. I was able to grow not only like hard skills with Excel, but also soft skills with speaking to other okay. people. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Wow. Well, and I think that's what people need to understand. Mm -hmm. And part of making internships part of the curriculum is just what Carl said. Yes. Because. We try and tell our students, you know, use high school as an opportunity. And that's why we, I won't say beg for internships, but like Carl said, it wasn't in necessarily his pathway, mm -hmm. but he gained some hard skills. He gained some soft skills. And, and even that for Erica, Erica working on our first responder events and things, those were soft skills mm -hmm. and hard skills that go along with it. I was going to say, it. yeah. That you know what I'm saying? Both. So, so that is, uh, Carl mentioned at the beginning in terms of academic expectation, one of the things that's great about Homeland Security is we aren't a core class, right? Okay. We are not a math, science, English, social studies, right? Yes. We're the class that I want to challenge you to think. Yes. I want to challenge you to get outside your box. I want to challenge you to learn those soft skills because I think I mentioned it in our last talk. Um, these two students who are sitting here in 15 years might be doing a job that currently doesn't exist. Right. That's true. Right? Yes. The way the way the world is going. And so our job in Homeland Security is to prepare them for that. Yep. Yes. We want them to have the content knowledge. We want them to have the current event knowledge. We want them to have those things that are relevant to today. But when they walk out of my classroom, my most important task is to make sure that they're prepared for 10 years, 15 years down the road. Mm -hmm. And so if we can build that toolbox with them, that's what the goal and objective is. So no experience is wasted. Yes. Day, right. week, mm -hmm. summer, semester. Everything, we have the best kids in the world. We have I, the best I kids agree. in Randall County. <laughs> we do. And I will I will go to the mat on that. And they're different. They're diverse, which is what I love. Mm -hmm. um, and they need different things. And they want different things. And that's what we try and provide for them in Homeland Security. Mm -hmm. And so will they come out with knowing every department, you know, in, in DHS? Mm -hmm. They might. Because mm -hmm. that's part of Homeland One. But can Carl now look at all the media that's bombarding him mm -hmm. and make some cool judgments? Can Erica take an activity that she's going to have to do in college and yeah, right off the bat? Yeah. Then we have, we have met our goal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what is important to us. And Melissa, you went through this last time, mm -hmm. but I just want to get it from the perspective yeah. of the students here um, in terms of the curriculum. So, so yeah, I can speak on um, when I did take uh, Homeland Security Explorations. Yeah. Now I am a GIS, but I remember Explorations too. 
everything we learn can be applied in real life. So math, yeah, math is my favorite subject. I will say, okay, um, mm-hmm. academic subject, <laughs> <laughs> but like, it may not always be used in real life. I know Homeland Security. When, you know, whenever we learn about emergency preparedness or like pos- potential threats that can be used in real life, and yes. I will say that. Um, uh, we did have homework that we did take home on occasion, and it was very helpful. Like none of it felt like busy work. It felt like everything was involved. Everything would be useful. And in terms of GIS, um, that curriculum has also been great. We've been following, uh, you know, self-guided courses, but also advice from Ms. Bajadek. And I, I feel like I'm on track. And if I could take all of these courses again, I would. How about you, Erica? So I'm some of the exploration courses, but what I've come to learn is that it, there's a lot of critical thinking skills that take place when you take Homeland Security classes. Mm-hmm. And like Carl said, like emergency management is a big deal. So it helps us to stay prepared. We learn about FEMA and yes. FEMA. And then we have Department of Emerg- what was it? Office of Emergency Office Management. Of Emerg- yeah. uh, Office of Emergency Management come in mm-hmm. and they teach us things almost whenever they come in to like communicate with us and like tell us about their experiences. So it really helps us like the long haul from like when when you start learning it to like whenever like I wish I had this opportunity. It would have been really nice. How about you, Meredith? Well, that's what I was thinking. How innovative this program is, and yes. how and I probably said this at the last last podcast that I wish it was in every school in the county and the state because we're at a very fine line now with the life we live today on these being life skills mm-hmm. actually you know and not just curriculum but life skills yes. and then the critical thinking aspect is essential so i it's it really is i just hope that we expand as a society on this program and it grows into more schools let me ask you both and i'll ask you first carl how do you see the homeland security program helping you in your career goals? So, career goals, um, I, I don't know, I just learned so much, it's hard to choose one, but, <laughs> you know, okay, I will speak on soft skills. So, one of Homeland Security's events is mock interviews. Yes. So, I, I will say, you know, as I progress, you know, being this early with professional interviews, not just like um, casual interviews, but these are like professional interviews. Like, when I did the mock interview, it was with um, someone from NSA, I forgot mm-hmm. his name, but, <laughs> I will say that even though it's not part of a curriculum, it's something that Homeland Security did help with and was pretty involved in. So I will say my communication skills and uh, professionalism will go a long way in my career. Perfect, perfect. And you, Erica? So like I said, critical thinking skills go a long way. Yes. So once I started learning about like current events and like how to like look at um, at a media platform and decide if it's biased towards one wing or the other mm-hmm. really helps me define what I'm looking at not even, not only like for news but like on social media as well mm-hmm. and when people tell me things like now with like critical thinking skills mm-hmm. that I have developed it helps me like pick apart what they're saying and yes. think about it more and be like is this what you're trying to say like yes. so I can get like a deeper meaning of what's going on in the mm-hmm. world perfect I and like a more accurate meaning yes <laughs> So, I know that you started off like this, Carl. What was one of your fun uh, memories that you've had in uh, the Homeland Security Program? Uh, this one's pretty easy for me. Um, <laughs> back in January of this year, I had the opportunity to go to the Pentagon. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes. Okay. yeah, I was uh, one of two students. It was with Homeland Security and Health. Uh, that month was also National Human Trafficking Awareness mm-hmm. Month. Mm-hmm. And we went to see a sex extortion, hidden pandemic documentary film yes. uh, for awareness and after we went to see that movie or that film we also decided to spread it to our cluster to the community so we advertised yep. it we created a promotional video and I'd say it went great yep. I, I, was I was gonna say you were there Colonel Sapp attended yep. it was yes great. I'm sure he yep. was excited about yep. that yep. yes you have any fun moments yet so <laughs> yeah. yes she does so, okay so I didn't like the first responders drive. I got to go to New York City last year oh, as a part okay. of the Homeland Security. And I really got to like see what the Department of Homeland Security was mm-hmm. by going to the 9-11 Memorial mm-hmm. and going to the Statue of Liberty in Ellis Island. Like it really sat, I really sat there and I really thought that this is something that should have been created a long time ago. Because mm-hmm. so many problems could have been resolved if this was created a long time ago. Really quickly, I just want to share um, these are my kids. Yes. Right? Um, we are really a family. 
Yeah. And they know that between Mr. Hopper and I, um, there's always someone there for them. We're always, you know, Carl's been with me since his freshman year. Yeah. Erica has been with us since, you know, her freshman year. And so these are my kids. And so, <laughs> you know, it's really, I'm, I'm super excited to see Carl graduate and I can't, uh, you know, believe that he's going to be, oh, I can't believe it's been four years. <laughs> and, stuff. Um, and Erica the same, but you know, I mean, we're a family and you know, Fort Meade is a special place. Okay. Um, we have special kids and you know Carl has talked about you know computers for our career and on the way over we were talking about nursing for for Erica and I think one of the cool things is, is that either of those two things can fall under the DHS oh yeah right yes. so even if in their initial coming out of uh, their education for a career mm -hmm. You never know when that's going to loop back and an opportunity is going to arise. And they're going to have that background knowledge. They're going to have that sense of if Carl sees something that opens in DHS or there's a nursing opportunity for Customs and Border Protection. Yes. You know I mean? All of that kind of intertwines. Mm -hmm. And so to be able to give that to them mm -hmm. in in a, over a course of four years is really a special thing. And so, yes. you know, when we say, when Jim and I, Mr. Hopper and I say our kids, we really do mean our kids. What advice would you give other students who want to consider the Homeland Security Program? I would say uh, take it. If, 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 <laughs> if, there's, if there's a brief thought in your mind of taking it, I would say take it. It's filled with opportunities, filled with ways to grow and be involved. Your brother. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I did recommend my brother for it. So. Oh, He's an eighth grader at MacArthur, so there you go. <laughs> okay, perfect. How about just you? Just like Carl said, just take it. Like you don't know where this program will take you. Yes. Like I started freshman year and didn't take it sophomore year, but the opportunities I got last year are incredible, and I still have these opportunities to these to this day. And the amount of like, like I said, the opportunities like are all over the place. Like you can help out with like the military month breakfast, the first responders drive, the honor garden. All of it. 9-11. Veterans. There's yeah. every, anyway, yeah. anyway, there's always a way to help. Well, Meredith, Melissa, Erica, and Carl, thank you all for being here today. I appreciate you taking the time to share information about your student experience. Also, you know, how the um, curriculum plays an integral part of how you are developed in this particular program. Thank you thank very you. much for having us. We appreciate it. Thank you to everyone who listened in today, and we'll see you next time on the next episode of Fort Meade Declassified. Oh,